It's going to take a wartime effort to deal with the supply side. Let's bring in Mike Moffat. He's founding director of Play Center at Smart Prosperity Institute. Mike, thanks so much for being with us. We always hear supply, supply, supply. That's the issue. You have done some incredible work as to what exactly that means, putting in context the supply we will need versus what we've ever done in history. Yeah, absolutely. So if we uh, look here in the province of Ontario, uh, we need to build at least 1.5 million homes in the next 10 years. And it's probably closer to about 1.8 with uh, recent population growth. To put that into context, we've never built more than 850,000 in any 10 year period. So basically what we have to do is something that we've none, never done before, build about 900,000 homes or so, and then double it in the same amount of time. So that's absolutely going to take a wartime-like effort to create the uh, homes and apartments and, and other units we need to house a growing population. That sounds um, like an insurmountable effort that has almost no cohesive political backing. <laughs> Well, there's no there's no plan. And that's one of the things that my colleagues and I are uh, calling on is that have the federal government work with other orders of government, the labor sector, the higher education sector, builders and industry to come together and do this. Uh, we've done it before. Back after World War Two, we had a housing crisis with all the returning veterans coming. We had a plan then and it worked pretty well. At the end of the 1960s, we had the first wave of baby boomers leave their parents houses move into apartments. And we had immigration increases back then. We had a number of policies to get apartment buildings built all across the country. I think we can do it again. So we should remember that this is not the first housing crisis in Canada's history, and it probably won't be the last. You're, what I loved about your report on this was that it was very solutions oriented beyond the platitude of we just need supply and you tried to address how we could actually do that and one of them is kind of being um, not hostile with developers really bringing them on side and saying what do you need to get this done. Absolutely. If uh, the CMHC says we need 5.8 million homes in Canada over the next decade or so, at half a million a home, that's $3 trillion of investment. So we can't be scaring off uh, investors. So there's a lot of tools we could use. Uh, back in the 60s, we had very nice tax incentives for apartment builders, and it, uh, we had record high apartment buildings back then. So we call on looking at the tools that we used in the past to build houses and reintroducing those uh, because they worked back then, and I believe they could work again today. And yet there are parts of housing that are just not going to generate much of a return. And I think people have been kind of stuck on that point uh, and not able to move through that. And you propose solutions to move through um, sort of, uh, what did you call it, non-market housing. Yeah, absolutely. So that's everything from student residences to deeply affordable housing. There are a number of policy tools we could use that, for instance, the government can buy uh, apartment buildings, either newly constructed or existing ones, retain ownership, but then lease, uh, lease them to uh, groups like the United Way and others to run. The nice thing about this is it doesn't blow up the deficit or debt, uh, because while we do have to pay for those buildings, since the government retains the asset, it has both an asset and an offsetting liability, and that kind of nets out on, on the books. Of your six recommendations, none of them are tax, which is the only solution we've seen so far <laughs> when it comes to the housing market. Yeah, so tax is a, is, is a big one. So uh, we need to remove the GST and HST on, on purpose-built rentals. Uh, we absolutely need to look at uh, development charges and, and other fees as well, because taxes make up about 30% of the construction of new apartment buildings and homes. So often in this country, we, we tax uh, new construction the same way we tax cigarettes, and we tend to have the similar results. So we absolutely have to be looking at the tax system as, as part of the solution. What about introducing perhaps more nuance to uh, the tax system on things like land transfer tax, uh, applying perhaps a heavier levy if it is a second or third home, or if you are foreigner versus if you are a domestic? Because right now, any taxes do seem to be kind of more broad-based. Everybody has to eat them. You've seen moves like this in places like Singapore, for example. You, you have, though. I think we'd have to be a little bit careful about that. Like, why investors are buying up so many single-family homes is that there's a, a shortage of rental property. So what we're seeing across the country is those homes getting bought up and uh, turned into things like student rentals. 
we think a better way to address the system uh, situation is to just build more rental housing, uh, build more on-campus residences and that kind of thing. And what that, that does is it lowers the rate of return for those investors. They start to move away from those markets and we can get those uh, single family homes bought by families again.